ask you. Hi, everybody. Tom Stewart here with Clean Business Today. I have my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hi, y'all. And we've got a very, very special guest today. Um, <laughs> not only is she my Finally. wife, not only is she my wife, but she's uh, one of the most knowledgeable people I know about the science of cleaning and a lot of the stuff that we talk about and share and the programs we put together. Um, Janice is the person who makes us all look smarter than we really are. So uh, we're going to be talking a little bit later about the professional house cleaner program. And we want to make sure that, that we uh, get everything uh, right on cue. So, so Janice is going to uh, keep it straight and make sure we get all that right. Oh, Janice. So uh, here we are on a Monday. Are, is it just me or is it starting to be? Is it me or is it starting to feel like that not as much is happening over the course of, of, of a weekend as maybe what it felt like a month ago? Not to say that maybe some things aren't happening, oh, but it's absolutely. not. Absolutely. Like, yeah, it's just everything that we thought we knew Friday changed on Monday. It's well, let's kind of settled down a little bit. It used what, to be kind of stuffy going into the weekend because. Who knew how it was going to blow up, right? Mm hmm. Guess yeah, what? Denise says weekend. also, not just you. Guess what we did this weekend, Liz? What? Tell us. We uh, um, created a PowerPoint. Well, yeah, we did PowerPoint <laughs> or two. We worked a little bit. We did. We worked pretty much all weekend. Um, it was a very pretty weekend, too. But. You know, based on our call that we had Friday, we were talking about like Square and Cabbage and PayPal and some of those other digital platforms taking PPP applications. We took two of our branches that we had not yet received PPP funds for or even approval and applied through Cabbage. And it looks like both of them have, have, have been approved. One's definitely been approved, but both of them have had micro deposits put in their bank accounts. So... More has happened in 48 hours through Cabbage, you know, I would say the last month through my regular bank. And I'm not going to throw them under the bus, but. Denise uh, got hers too. Woo! Denise, fireworks for you. Denise, fireworks for you. She got her PPP also. She got hers from PayPal. Yay, oh, Leslie too. Woohoo! All right. Good job. Everybody's getting their money. <laughs> So we're all on the yeah, clock. Yeah, so exciting. We're all on the clock. And and it feels so much, yeah, we're on the clock. But it feels so much better to get the money in the account, right, y'all? And to be, okay, now I can go. Before then, it's like, gosh, just like hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. So it's like free reign now. Yay. I know it feels so much better to me. Hey, Cherry. Uh, no more tie dye, Tom. You know he's with Janice, so he's wearing his yeah. nice clothes. Yeah, I'm dressing up. Tonight, <laughs> but, you know, the week is early. Dressing up. Early. Everybody makes fun of Tom and Janice because of the way he dresses. Yeah. Okay, That's what is? Never even heard of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's not uh, not easy being married to me, is it, Janice? No. Well, I'll tell you a story. In high school, everyone used to always um raid tom's closet on tacky tacky shirt day so <laughs> thanks for sharing that jess that's awesome <laughs> i don't think there's a lot of people surprised by that on here <laughs> not thinking that at all <laughs> uh, susan i've never heard of your bank from fifth third bank that is the strangest name for a bank they're, like the so larger, they're larger bank, okay. though. They are? Yeah, I mean, they're big up in the Northeast. I mean, they're out of Ohio, I think. But um, Are they three times as big or five times as big? I'm just curious. As, as what? Yeah, I don't know. They're the fifth largest no, bank, right? No, or the no, no. third largest bank? Well, that's something you the do with or something or... Yeah, I forget the story. Derek was sharing it with me. Maybe two banks merged, and one was fifth something another, and one was third something another, and I don't remember. 
There's a story there, though. It means something. Okay, to yeah. Oh, they're huge in Ohio. Okay, so it's a really big bank. One for idle and one for PPP. Is that what you're doing? How do we determine what cups out of which? Isn't the criteria the same? Payroll, rent, supplies, etc. So, yeah, I'm doing the same thing, Leslie. Um, two separate accounts. Um, but, no, different things come out of the different accounts. The PPP is the one that you really need to be tracking, like, micro carefully and that's the one that you have to split into quarters and three quarters of it can go to the payroll piece and 25 percent of it a quarter of it can go toward the other stuff like your your rent and your and i just found out gas is now included right that was a new thing automobile fuel is something that we saw being in included there. Um, utilities. So go ahead. No, Tom, more, no more than a quarter. You can like spend 80, yeah. 85, 90 percent on payroll. You can spend as all of it on payroll, but at least seventy five percent of it has to go to payroll. Yeah, and, and no more than twenty five percent can go to the other stuff. And, and, and the idea with the PPP is to get as much of it as possible treated as a grant so you don't have to pay it back. Where the idle loan is just a flat out loan. You got the emergency part, which theoretically is, is yours and you're not gonna have to pay back. I think that's probably taken out of your PPP if, if I understand how that works. But the, the bigger part of the idle you will, well, at least the intent is for you to be paying that back under any circumstance. It's just a 30 year AM, I believe, at a very low interest rate. But is anybody like me, like they're giving me a 30 year loan? I'm not supposed to live that long, y'all. <laughs> I'm like, what are they thinking? <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'm never going to be able to get a loan like that again, right? Nobody's giving me a 30-year loan at 3.75% interest. So, yeah, I'm, I was thinking that was a pretty sweet deal. Yeah, sweet, sweet deal there. Uh, Susan says she has um, she has a question. She received unemployment as self-employed and also received the idle and will also get the PPP. So do I still qualify for unemployment? Do you know if I should still do the weekly certification? Do you know if I should still do the weekly? Uh, it's a good question. Um, I know I know one business owner whose name rhymes with crickets. Crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, you know I, I, I think that you can still put yourself on partial unemployment and still kind of get the 600 bucks. But I honestly, I would I would ask the uh, the people who do the unemployment in your state and just, you know, be transparent and ask them how it works. They'll tell you. Hey, um, Tom, Leslie is asking if the information about the PPP and the idol is spelled out somewhere. Um, that she could refer her accountant to. Um, maybe you could put the link to the Forbes article. That was a pretty good summary, I think. Okay. Could, could you put that? In yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I just had another one queued up, but I'll, I'll put both of them here. There's two links that I'm putting in the chat. The first one is the Cabbage FAQs, which is really awesome. It's really good. They specifically answer questions like, is workers' compensation something that's covered as a forgivable expense under PPP? And they say, no, no, it's not, that you're not going to be able to pay workers' comp out of your PPP funds. Um, on the Forbes article, there's a couple of things that we've talked about that, that that's really uh, kind of interesting. They uh, point out that, well, I didn't say a lot in there that they said this is absolutely the way it's going to be at the end of the program. They're saying the way it is now, you might be able to have a building that you own yourself that you rent to your company and you might be able to write off that entire rent as part of PPK. I guess the way they interpret it, they think if you can, but they aren't sure 
when it comes time to actually settle up if the world rules are going to work that way or not. Um, yeah. They were also talking about can you deduct the payroll that you're from your taxes as, as an expense that are being paid for through the PPP? They're thinking that maybe you can if Congress wants to be generous and they just aren't really sure for certain how they're going to be looking at all of that. But at least the door is open where, where the way it's written now, they believe that's a possibility. But it gets into that thing. It's an unprecedented event. And there's a lot that we don't know. And there's a lot that Forbes doesn't know if you read their article. But they're, they're, they're pointing us uh, towards the best information they have. But the Forbes article and the uh, cabbage both is, is, is good stuff. The Forbes is 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 probably one of the best treatments we've seen. Yeah, it was it was really good. I, I really liked it. I liked um, it had just the smidgen of humor to keep me going too. Yeah. No, I, I, I like that. We're, we're warning you; it's a little bit long, but uh, I guess Liz shared that with me this weekend, so it's uh, it, it's worth the read. If you guys are willing uh, to sit here, if you guys are willing to sit here every day at five o'clock and go through this, then you certainly owe it to yourself to read the, the Forbes article. How about that? Yeah, it, it's better than us for sure. <laughs> Although I'm not sure that the Forbes article is much more um, uh, sure of itself no. than we are. It mm -hmm. says repeatedly, "What? Yeah." So that is kind of what we do. I did answer a question here. Trina wanted to know, I don't know if you saw that or not, Tom. Trina wanted to know if her $10,000 advance that she got from the idol, if she had to pay that back. And I did respond with, no, Trina, you don't. That's an advance on your loan. And it is being treated as a grant. Uh, the only thing that's a weird thing about that is if you get your PPP, then those two things kind of roll together. You don't get two ten thousand dollar chunks, but you know it, it. It will become part of your PPP monies. Based on everything that we know now, we should not have to pay that back. But yeah, when the when it was announced, I'm not for you if that changes. <laughs> when it when it was announced, it was called a grant. Very quickly, yeah. instead of calling it a grant, and they called it an emergency loan that should not should not should not have to be paid back um you know we just need to wait and see it's, it's cheap money regardless but based on what we know we're all working under the assumption that that's uh, that's a gift from the federal government that you don't have to pay back yeah I, and, and we like that um yeah tj ah i'm sad for you dude i, I I remember I got that. Too. I kept getting that from my PPP. Don't worry. Don't contact us. We're we're ha we're processing it. Well, what does that mean? I got an email on Friday saying my application for the idol saying they were processing in the order they received it. Okay. So basically, I'm not going to tell you anything, but I want you to think I'm telling you something so that you don't bug us. You don't, you don't call try to us. Yeah, don't call us. Because I'm telling you something that means absolutely nothing. That's yeah, frustrating. So, Tom, the link that we had, the phone number that we had, wasn't that was for the idol. Have you, if you yeah. haven't seen that, TJ, go to the links. Did you already put that, Tom? Where are the links? Um, clean business to, today. Uh, check my speed dial. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. So this number that um, Tom is going to put in, TJ, call them and ask them if you can get a link to your portal. Um, you may get answers like the first time you call, they may say something like, oh, it's being processed. Say, OK, great. Thank you. Hang up and call back. You'll get somebody else. Ask again. Can I get the link to my portal? Then they might say, Hmm, you know, I don't have authorization to do that. Say, okay, thank you. Click and then call back. You'll get somebody else. Hi, can I get the link to my portal? Keep doing that until you get the link to your portal. Uh, I know people that have called as many as eight times and then gotten the link. And I know other people that have just quit calling. They're like, oh, forget it. I'll just wait until I get it. So up to you, but I know it has worked for people. 
Um, Leslie, can I pay the idle off in one year and pay no interest? I would think so, right, Tom? No interest for a year for that. We're not making any interest payments for that first year. So I, I would absolutely think so, Leslie. And uh, I mean, depending on where we are in a year, that, that might make good sense. You know, we just don't know. The reason why I'm loving this is uh, we just don't know. As, as much as we would like to think, we know where the COVID-19 situation is going to be in three months, six months, right? Everybody's got their idea. We don't know. Nobody knows. Oh, I have a question for you guys real quick here. Oh, the idle portal link. Oh, thanks, Tom. That's that's awesome. Um, are there guidelines for the idle money, what it can be spent on? I do want to say something real quick, but um, there aren't a lot of guidelines on that. Are there, Tom? There are some things like they have to be business expenses. You can't buy a Ferrari. Right. Um, there, there are some basic things, but nothing that's any more restrictive than a normal business loan that I saw. It's more, they'll, they'll it's give it to you. It's, 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 it's more relaxed than the PPP funds, but there is a, a lot of a lot of fine print. And I guess we need to, we, we probably, not probably, we, we do need to bring that up. Let me see if I can actually get that. We can share that tomorrow. Okay. Oh, I, I uncrossed my fingers before I said what I was going to say. I got my distracted. Yeah, if you let go of your fingers, you'll forget the thing. You know how I know? I forgot the thing. Let me see if I can scroll up and see what it was. Dang, I plan on getting a Hummer. Man, that's a bummer. I see what you did there. I see what you did right there, TJ. That was tricky. Uh, let's see. I got an email. I wasn't it. Darn it. Well, it'll come back to me. It, it, it wasn't that important, obviously. My mom would have said it was a lie, or I'd remember it. For those that have been asking me, I had a lot of people reaching out about my mom. My mom is doing okay. She's still in the hospital. Um, hoping she'll go home tomorrow. So she's she's doing okay. And for those who are just hearing this for the first time, she does not have COVID-19. <laughs> so she is recuperating well from other stuff. Hello, Liz, you are funny, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times when I'm not trying to be, a lot of people have commented on that. You're not the first one, Victoria. Um, QuickBooks account should be adequate for idle. Uh, most people are saying so, yes. I work with a Profit First accountant, and um, um, my accountant is saying, yes, fine. So, you know, do what, do what you will, however you're going to handle that. Liz, we're, All right. we're, we're about... 20 minutes in. Um, did we want to start? Uh, I guess Sharon had a bunch of people over the last week asking for more details about the professional house cleaner program. And, you know, I brought Janice along with us to help us with that. Do we want to jump into that to give us some time? Yeah, we do need to. I do have one question that I accidentally missed, Tom. If you don't mind hitting this one question while you're pulling up your deck. Sure. So, um, Cherry wants to know, and Cherry, I'm not sure if it's Cherry or Sherry, forgive me. Um, can you clarify? I have one employee plus myself. She has not worked at all during April. I was hoping to pay her and myself for the hours that she would have worked in April. Is that not possible? She writes true, but I think she means is that not possible? Well, certainly you can pay her. I guess the question is, do you plan on paying her out of the PPP funds? Is that the, the question? If um, that's the question, then the answer is no. Yeah. Unless you had your PP funds at that time, PPP funds at that time. The the forgivable amount of time is eight weeks from the day it gets into your account. The money gets into your account eight weeks later, a full eight weeks. So 56 days and those monies that you pay in that time frame can be forgiven. So I hope I hope that was clear, uh, Cherry. Oh, Diana's on. She says hi, Janice. <laughs> Hello, Diana. Hey, Diana. <laughs> All righty, let's go. I'm excited. We're ready so, to do this. 
Yeah, I'm so glad Janice is here to like give us the the real thing here. So I know like Diana, you know Janice, you know that she's the one that created all of this stuff. So um and, and Tom's kind of her her little puppet over there saying all this stuff. Uh, <laughs> not really, I'm just kidding. I'm giving Tom a hard time. No. Um but 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 truly Janice is the one that has put the time, the effort, the the brain power into this material and creating it and and passed it on with many, many people. But um, I, I'm, so I'm glad that you came on, Jess. I know this is not your favorite thing to do, but thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I mean, just just for the record, you know, a lot of the the nerdy, you know, parts of this book, uh, Janice uh, was, was was a driving force behind it. Uh, we did another book on chemical free cleaning, which is a lot of science and, uh, you know, hygienic cleaning in this as well. And somehow I got my name on it, but this is really work that, that, that Janice did as well. Um, if you ever go to Modern Cleaning and read the blogs, and you know, some of those go back, you know, 10 years or more, but there's really some 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 awesome stuff there that still gets a lot of traffic with people, uh, you know, they rank really high in natural search because uh, it's it's information on the science of cleaning and um, that's it's, it's it's a big part of of of, of her gig and it uh, it makes us all better and it's uh, a big part of this program. So that being said, um, I want to start off by just just talking about why is the professional house cleaning program important, and I want us to think about. What a job is versus what a profession is. Most of us who start off in the house cleaning industry, cleaning homes, you know, for, for, for pay, start off as a job. But if you think about it, the bar for a job is rather low. Um, you know, we're, we're looking for, 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 for people who probably have a driver's license, who uh, maybe can pass a drug test, uh, you know, have a, have a clean uh, you know, background check, uh, maybe a good driving record. If they've ever had you know previous employment and demonstrated that you know they can go to work on a regular basis that's a plus but for most of the people who start off in this industry uh that's uh pretty much the 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 criteria for, for for being hired for that job that being said that's just a starting point once you're there there's a tremendous amount of trust that is placed on people that are cleaning homes you think about everything from just having a key to the house to uh, the, the, the hygienic uh, cleaning portion of this and preventing disease to, you know, trusting that we're not going to poison the cat, to, you know, we're not going to damage, you know, the, the, the countertops, so we're going to remember to lock the door. Um, you'd be hard pressed to find another service industry that has that level of responsibility that, that, that every one of our cleaning professionals has. So that's really at the heart of why professional house cleaning is really important because you know, if you look at how the world looks at house cleaning, you could argue that it's really un underappreciated and the respect that really should go towards the people providing that service is, is lacking. Um, all that trust, but at the same time, the thinking is, well, does anybody can clean a home? So there's a gap there. This program, is, is one of our missions here is to close that gap, to fix that incongruency. So we're doing two things in this program. First, we're going to be giving cleaning professionals the technical knowledge they need to be professionals. you got to have the knowledge in order to, to do it, and a lot of that is really the why behind what we're doing. If you understand the why, there's a lot more value, the critical thinking, the, 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 the ability to function at a higher level is there if you understand the why rather than just, just following some procedure, not having a clue why that's the procedure to begin with. Secondly, and this is really important as well, that what we're doing in this framework is setting a standard, kind of a conduct, to setting the tone for the industry. Um, and this is necessary to kind of get the thought process going, thought process going to get this thing that's normally thought of a job as a job and get it to be looked upon as a profession. So in order to do this, we want to make this program accessible. We want to make it accessible to as many people as we can. We want everybody who's cleaning homes for somebody else to have this information. So that's why 
we're putting it online, we're breaking it up into classes, the classes have modules, and, you know, if somebody can just bounce in and out over whatever period of time it takes them to get through, you know, the seven classes in order to uh, complete and get the certification. It's important to recognize that it's non-prescriptive, Think of what we're doing here as like the driver's ed manual for, for driving a vehicle. It's not specific to a type of automobile. It's not specific to country driving or city driving. It's just the driver's ed manual. This is the rules of the road. And we'll be sharing here in the next few slides what that looks like. But this applies to anybody who's in the business of, of, of cleaning homes professionally, regardless of business model or the, the, the tools or the chemicals or, or team composition, completely non -prescriptive. So the second <laughs> part is in the story. Whoa, what, what was that big hand movement there, Tom? That, that was big, he was excited, seven, you guys. Five, seven, count them. Five on this hand, two on this hand. <laughs> All right. Class, class number one launches Wednesday, right? 12 o'clock Eastern time. So in a little less than two days from now, one, two, three, four, five, 44 hours from now and change, it's going to be, be going live. Um, what is uh, professional house cleaning, Janice? What are the big takeaways in this class? Well, we talk about the latest research in why a clean home is important, um, but being a professional is really a vocation. It takes knowledge and it takes commitment. And um, that's what we talk about um, in this chapter. Um, Matt Ricketts does the, the professionalism section and uh, we talk about just general, what it means to be a professional. And, and we don't really apply it to being a house cleaner, a professional house cleaner till the end. So, um, and we do go over some um, components of being a professional that, I don't know, people who are familiar with this book, Protecting the Built Environment by um, Dr. Michael Berry, um, he, developed four four components of being a professionalism and we kind of based our um section on his thoughts on that and then liz does the um customer service um section so you know that that's what I'm, that's I think, awesome isn't it liz actually it, it is going to be awesome but really i love that professionalism section and I think that is really um, the thing that, because everybody on here is business owners, I think the thing that you guys are gonna love about this section is it gives uh, your people a feeling of, wow, this really is a professional job. It's not just me cleaning toilets and them trying to make it seem like it's something more. I think <laughs> it's going to be clear that it really can be a profession for a professional, but you got to act that way. It, the, your team members, your coworkers, they are going to have to act like professionals to be treated like professionals. And not just um, not just talking about, like Janice said, it's not about house cleaning professionals. It's what do professionals look like out in the world? We need to look like that. So I, I really love that section a lot. Of course, I love customer service, you know, one of my passions, but... <laughs> But professionalism is like really big for me. Um, yes, Debbie, you can um, sign up and start the program later than Wednesday. It's just a million times cheaper, maybe not a million. It might be a slight exaggeration. It's a little bit cheaper if you sign up before Wednesday. Liz, discount code, is it pre-sale, Tom? Discount yeah. code? Yeah, it is, Denise. Anyway, I, I love this section. <laughs> Is is hygiene a dirty word, Janice? No, it is not. I know better ones. Uh, <laughs> I'll uh, share them. 
um, clean this. Um, this is their cleaning for health section. It contains new, um, the latest from the CV, ugh, CDC on COVID-19 and new research on cleaning for health. Um, we go over germs that um, professional house cleaners are we explain what different types of germs are and talk about the types that you're more likely to run into when cleaning a home. Um, you can't talk about health without talking about the chain of infection. So we talk, we um, review that and pinpoint exactly where the professional house cleaner can make the most, um, make the biggest difference in the home. Um, we talk, we go over standard precautions. Anyone who has experience in the healthcare um, profession is familiar with standard precautions and PPEs. Everyone knows what PPEs are right now. Um, and equipment hygiene and personal hygiene are also a part of this. So when we did the uh, program for, for COVID-19, we talked specifically about one virus but when you talk about germs, I mean, there's all kinds of different pathogens. I mean, what are the, what are the different types of pathogens that are out there at a, at a high level? Well, we um, discuss the difference between a virus and a bacteria. And um, that makes a big difference based on how long they live on surfaces. And um, we talk about protozoa and parasites, too, that you might come in contact with in the home and uh, a little bit about fungi as well i guess Mark. oh yeah. yeah i forgot about that one sorry don't forget about those guys <laughs> and we talked about the chain of infection but chain of infection with covid19 is basically people you know get people sick but in a broader sense you know you can you know get sick because of a raw piece of chicken on the countertop you know or Food you know, safety. Yeah, I mean, there's so many, so many other different forms of the chain of infection in, in the house cleaning world. So we're going to be talking about that in a much, much broader context. Right. I'm really happy to see the word hygiene here a lot too. That that seems to be a really um, good word right now that a lot of people are are focusing on. They want to um, see hygienic cleaning methods and, and they want to feel like things are um, just being done hygienically. So I really like seeing this word right now. And, and I think it's been underused in the past. Yeah, it has so. a, um, a community component to it and how it affects everyone. Yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, that's a great way to say that, Janice. The definition is conditions or practices conducive to maintaining health and preventing disease, especially through cleanliness. Mm. So yay for us, you know, the whole thing, we're on the front line of defense in terms of uh, preventing infectious disease. Important now more than ever. Uh, Denise wants to know real quick, if buying for her employees, should she be putting her contact info in? Um, you want to, when we get to the sign up part, if, if you go to modernclean.com, there's two options. One is on the left of the screen, if you want to just buy one class, you go there. But if you're buying in bulk, you click on the one on the right, on the, on the right hand side of the screen, and you put your information in. And the way that happens is you send us a list of all your employees, and we'll upload all that for you. So we will, we will enroll all your employees for you. So if you're doing it for multiple employees, Go to the right hand side of the screen and do that. You know, even though this this slide says, oops, how did that happen? I still thought she was dancing. <laughs> oops. <laughs> you know, what, one thing that strikes me on this slide is the number of items that are on it. It's like, think of all the different ways that you can have an accident, that someone can get hurt. In, in just 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 cleaning homes, so um, you know that alone, I guess, just tells us how important training is and and, and the emphasis on that. Mm -hmm. Jen, what do, what do we have here? 
So we start with general safety as a, an umbrella um, topic that kind of covers everything underneath it. Um, we basically go over the latest OSHA um, training recommendations for each of these topics for bloodborne pathogens, um, which we actually introduce in the previous chapter to, um, and we go over hazard communication and material handling where, which is really important in the safety data sheets and the personal protective equipment we go into again. So a lot of we're we're um, re-emphasizing things that they learned in the previous chapter and um, introducing just some very important safety um, procedures. Yeah, you know, I I don't really even think about workplace violence, or I hadn't before, until we had somebody pull a knife on one of our employees in Atlanta, in our Atlanta office. It was really scary. And, you know, ever since then, I'm like, wow, you really need to have a workplace violence program in place because here we are, all the leaders of this company, all kind of scrambling, trying to like do the right thing, do the right thing. And, you know, it, it, it was, it was scary. So I, I really love that that's on there. And as business owners, we're all scrambling, trying to find ways to save money and to be more profitable. And one of the lowest hanging fruits out there is to have a really good safety program and to make sure that you're, you're keeping your cleaning professionals safe. Because if you don't have workers' comp claims, your rate goes down. And that's one of the, 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 the larger you know, components of, of, of the labor burden on, on your payroll. I mean, this is, this is real money here if, if you can, can, can do a good job of managing us. Not to mention just the whole social and, and moral obligation as an employer to, to do everything that you need to be doing to keep your people safe. And the legal obligation, really, if you're operating your cleaning company, by law, you have to have a safety program. And if you don't, you can be facing, you know, fines from the government. You can be open to civil litigation. You can be deemed to be negligent, in which case they can come after you for what they call treble damages and uh, even pierce the uh, veil of, of the corporation and sue you personally. I mean, there's a lot of crazy things that can happen. So you got to be serious about safety. Mm -hmm. Science of cleaning, <laughs> chemistry, <laughs> physics of cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 what do we got here? I, I don't want this section to be intimidating to people um, because we keep it basic, um, but it's important information because uh, it helps people identify the type of soil they're um, dealing with so that they know what type of chemical to use. And that's why the pH scale is so important. Um, people, once people understand the pH scale, it, choosing a chemical to clean so, a soil and a surface with becomes so much easier. Um, and so we talk, um, we go over that in, in very basic terms so that people can understand it because it can be intimidating. And, um, then we talk about what some common cleaning components are in, um, cleaning chemicals and what they do. So that's another way that you enables you to choose a good cleaning cleaner for what you want to do. Um, but how, but you're, not, you're not saying though, no, Janice, you're not going to be talking about things like Clorox cleanup or, or Barkeeper's Friend. You're not going to be talking about specific cleaners, are you? Um, no, we're going to put them in categories. We're talking in broad categories, but... Um, okay. You, they, people should be able to put their favorite cleaner into a category and 
and read and, about it. Yeah, again, this is like the driver's ed manual. This is non-prescriptive. We'll talk about general purpose cleaner, and everybody might have their favorite, you know, brand of general purpose cleaner. We'll just address it as window cleaner, general purpose cleaner, disinfectant. There's different mm -hmm. types of different properties. We'll, we'll get into that a little bit. But uh, again, non-prescriptive, and I guess even more importantly, this is designed for the cleaning professionals, the people that are actually out there cleaning homes every day. So. We're going to break in this down, as Janice said, into the basic components of this. We're not going to get too uh, too crazy in terms of making this complicated. We're going to going to present this in in simple bite sized pieces. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, what makes a cleaning product work better, or what interferes with the work a cleaning product is supposed to do? Um, general cleaning products. Um, we talked about the different types of disinfectants because there are new disinfectants on the market now. Um, but how long has it been since we wrote the uh, professional house cleaning technicians manual? So we're gonna talk about those. Natural products, um, principles of cleaning. What happens once you choose your cleaning um cleaning product and then proper disinfection yeah. the method of disinfecting and a lot of this i guess is really getting into the why again isn't it mm -hmm. awesome contents and surfaces you know i've seen a lot of training programs i mean i've you know, Liz and I do a lot of a uh, lot of a lot of uh, training for a lot of different companies. I haven't seen many in-house training programs that speak a whole lot to to, to this particular section, which is uh, kind of interesting. What? Well, you know, Tom, uh, you saying that I I can tell you that even the business owners that I have worked with and talked with don't know a lot of this stuff they can't identify like if i point at my counter and say what what is the surface they're like uh other than counter they don't have a lot to go on so i really think everybody's going to appreciate this not just our our um house cleaning professionals so i, I think this is going to be super super exciting section sorry janice i'm just excited about this one <laughs> what do we have here janice uh, we, start, we start with the cleaning cycle, which is um, a certain way of thinking about the condition of a um, surface so that you know how to clean it more efficiently and effectively. Um, and we talk about specific different specific types of floors and counters and cabinets and um, their characteristics and how what works best to clean them um, and some problems you can run into so and the same thing with their contents and furnishings so obviously there's different types of soils that wind up on different types of surfaces so the combinations of all of those i guess can, can you know there's many many of those it's important to understand what surfaces you're dealing with to make sure that you're using the right tools and the right chemicals to remove particular soil in a responsible way without damaging the surface. Is that correct? Correct. Uh, so I guess we do this on a regular basis and sometimes I guess we get undesirable outcomes, right? Either Right. right. And it, it helps a professional house cleaners not experiment in the field. <laughs> Please don't experiment in the field. <laughs> we'll have them be better able to identify the proper cleaning technique and the cleaning chemical. And I know you guys all have great stories of somebody using that green you pad on a counter or a faucet, right? <laughs> Some nice stainless steel. Yeah. 
So we've, we've talked about chemicals, we've talked about all the different types of soils, and part of that is like all of the germs, all of the uh, pathogens that we're dealing with. We've talked about the surfaces that we're going to be cleaning. So now with class six, we're introducing what, Janice? Um, we're talking about quality in this one. You know, what, what, do, you, what do you do to um, create meet the customer's expectations and quality is service quality is a really big part of this one um we introduced standard operating procedures and scope of work in the professional section and um here we really go into we describe what each one is so that um people no matter what you call it whether you call it a customer worksheet or a, a, tick, a work ticket or a checklist, um, you'll be able to, know, oh, okay, that's my scope of work. So, um, and how, again, it goes back to why it's important in delivering quality. So, and I guess I see productivity and ergonomics and, you know, my background back when I had a real job was like an industrial engineering. So that was, was, was a lot of what that was about. So again, all of this is, is very non-prescriptive. Think of it as the driver's ed manual. And we're talking about procedures, methods, productivity. This is like best practices, mm -hmm. regardless of what your standard operating procedure looks like, what products you use, what equipment you use, team composition, you know, regardless of how you train your people, this is kind of the overview, helping your uh, cleaning professionals understand, showing them the why behind why you do what you do. Right. Um, Tom and I were talking about this earlier. Um, there is a right way and a wrong way to do things sometimes, but there's more than one right way to do things often times. And um, so that's what we discuss. And, um, so it is non-prescriptive. It's just, it's very general. Another thing I really like about this particular class is that um, you, you can gain some credibility. Uh, some of these terms are things that you may have heard of and maybe aren't using regularly in your own company, but you could be. Scope of work, uh, you have a scope of work, even if you've never thought of it in that way. The mm -hmm. things that you're doing in your company all the time that's your scope of work. And so giving it this more professional name can actually raise your own feeling of professionalism and your company's professionalism along with it. Hey, right. Ursula. And, and, and specifically understanding how it fits into delivering a quality mm -hmm. um, product or quality service is actually, you know, that, that's kind of, that was kind of a, important moment for me in terms of understanding these things. We, we, we define quality service in terms of expectations and, and perceptions and basically if you're on the same page with your client in terms of what the expectations are and if you're able to meet those expectations and get your client to understand that you've met those expectations then you've provided quality service and everything that we're doing in this program contributes to that and you know what Liz was was alluding to earlier really gets into creating more credibility, which leads to more trust. And we began the discussion talking about the high level of trust that consumers place in in, in, in cleaning professionals to clean their home. And the higher, the more credible you are, the more you can show that you're being trustworthy because you understand what you're doing. You've got procedures in place, and you're well trained. Oh, you're just going to get better outcomes and you know you get the benefit of a doubt at that point if if the customer knows you're good they're going to be you know they're going to be a lot less critical and they're just going to they're going to be happy that you're good you know you it's going to be a lot more difficult for you to have an unsatisfied customer at that point it's almost like a virtuous circle that feeds on itself yeah. they're just not as picky y'all right that's the bottom line they don't go looking for what you did wrong because they already know you did it right. 
Uh, yeah. Ursula, the answer to your question about if we're including in the program procedures for the employees, um, the procedures are going to be like broad. So it's not going to be very specific. Like we're not going to be saying that you have to use a magic eraser on these surfaces and you have to use a microfiber this way. It's not going to be very specific. There will be um, um, some, there will be some procedures that are shown, but not very specific. Uh, yeah. Things that you're going to be able to modify to your company. This way or the highway or anything like that. It's, it's, they're used as examples, but um, again, there's, there are several right ways to do a lot of what we do. So, you know, so we've talked about, you know, the chemicals that we use. We've talked about the soils that we remove. We've talked about the, the germs, the pathogens that we're dealing with that, that, that we're removing. We've talked about you know, the procedures that, that, that we use to, to, to clean. We've talked about the surfaces that we're removing all those soils and, and, and pathogens from, we're doing that using tools, right? And that's the last class that we're doing here, Janice. What are the big takeaways in class number seven? Uh, well, we discussed the difference between productivity tools and cleaning tools. And um, we describe each one and the advantages and disadvantages of each one. For example, when we talk about vacuums, um, we don't specifically talk brand names. We talk about backpack vacuums, upright vacuums, and um, canister vacuums, and the advantages, disadvantages, and how to use them most efficiently. Um, and also some general care of your um, tools and equipment. So we talk about a productivity tool. What would you define as a productivity tool? Um, a caddy, because okay. you don't actually clean anything with it. You, you don't scrub. You don't scrub something with a caddy or an apron. <laughs> right, but you got. Hopefully. <laughs> but you need them. Right. <laughs> okay. So that basically an overview of the, uh, the, the seven classes. We're gonna be rolling these out over, over the month of, of May. Um, and again, the overarching point of this is to establish what professionalism is and help uh, anybody who's, who's working for your company as a, as a cleaning professional understand what being a professional is, help them see themselves as a professional and start behaving in a way, engaging on the on the path to becoming a professional. And it's like the 80-20 rule. And one of the things that, that, that we, we emphasize is we need jobs, right? If you didn't need a job, you wouldn't be doing this to begin with. So you're going to have to get up early in the morning. You're going to have to, you know, go clean homes every day. And it's, it's hard work. And that's 80% of it. If you can give it that little extra 20% in terms of building the skill set, building the knowledge, learning the lexicon, being able to establish trust by establishing yourself as knowing the whys behind what you're doing and being more responsible and more trustworthy with, with everything that's associated with, 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 with professional house cleaning. Uh, we all get better outcomes. Your, your clients are happier. Our businesses have more customers and we're making more money. Uh, as cleaning professionals, we're creating more value. And part of this is if I'm a more skilled cleaning technician, I'm going to be cleaning more homes. I'm going to be making more money. I'm going to, you know, I'm creating a better future for myself. So it's a win for, 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 for everybody involved in the process. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, 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 it's high time that we get serious about professionalizing the house cleaning industry and getting the people that are on board with actually doing the cleaning every day and giving them the opportunity to be the professionals that we need them to be. So I know that we're pushing on an hour here and people are asking how do they sign up. I want to get you there real quick. I want you to go to moderncleaning.com. You're going to see this button here on the right. That's a professional house cleaning program. And you're going to click on that. So this is it, um, Victoria. It's actually you're going to that website. It's not inside of Facebook. Nope. So I'm going to take this link 
and I'm gonna drop it right here. So you just go to moderncleaning.com again, and you press on the link on the right, and it takes you to this page, and it gives you the basic description of what the class is, and you've got two options. If you want to enroll and just get one class, you can go here. But if you want to buy what we call multiple classes for your team at bundled prices, you click here. And if you click here, you've got your, your discount pricing here. So you're getting six to 15 courses. It's 15% off. And the rate, the class is $99, okay? But you can get these discounts all the way up to 50% off that $99 if you just buy in bulk. And this are, these, are, these are the prices ongoing. But if you sign up before the class starts, which is Wednesday, so I guess really if you sign up by Tuesday, you get an additional 50% off. So you're an early adopter. You're buying something that hasn't even started yet. So we wanted to make it really you know, financially attractive to do that. So, you know, if you've got 51 cleaning professionals that you want to train, you can buy 51 seats and you're paying less than $25 a seat for those. Now, when you buy these, they're good for 90 days. So don't be buying, you know, three years worth. But if you want to buy enough to train people that you're going to be training over the next 90 days, now is the time to do it. It will never be cheaper. And if anyone has an idea or a suggestion as if we you think we might have missed something and we feel we can fit it into the uh, very generic broad uh, or the DMV model <laughs> of what we're trying to do here, um, we'd be happy to consider it. Janice, we also have a question here um, for, for you, I think, from Ursula. My cousin was working in commercial cleaning in Lima, and he died by COVID-19 last week. First, I'm so sorry, Ursula. Yes. I'm so sorry to hear oh. that. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. um, she also says he had bronchitis. Are you going to include how to manage employee employees having diabetes, bronchitis in the operating procedures? Um, she because they're more sensitive to get sick. I'm concerned about it. Thank you. I think that it's a different class. Uh, we deal with that a little bit in the COVID-19, but not right. to any any big degree even in that class. We, we um, talked so about populations that were at risk for complications if they contracted COVID-19. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The special precautions you should take. Right. Yeah. That would probably be a better class though, Ursula, for that specific thing. Mm -hmm. um, that class is $39 and I, I highly recommend that class. It's two days. It's 90 day, 90 minutes, or it doesn't have to be two days. It comes in two sections and it's 90 minutes a section, three hours total. You get a certificate of achievement when you complete it after you complete the test. Um, and the test is not easy. I, I felt like that was really good training. Actually, we got a lot of feedback that that was really good training. Yeah. Um, Tom, Ruth has a question for you. Um, if I buy in bulk, but I don't know who all the employees are who will eventually roll, can I give you the names piecemeal? Yes. Over, okay. over that 90 days? Yes. Over that 90 day period. What you, we do is you, there's a simple spreadsheet that you download that basically just put people's name and their email address in and we enroll them for you and then your employee gets the uh, email and that's how they set up their account and take the class and over the 90 day period from when you 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 sign up and buy those seats you just uh, send us the name and the emails for them and, and we'll, we'll set them up and we need, we need one business day to do that. So if you send it to us on a Saturday, don't expect it until sometime Monday. But, you know, if you give us one business day, we can we can, can keep up with that. Um, so if you buy 10, Ruth, and right now you currently only have six employees, but you know that over the course of the next 90 days, you're going to be hiring four, maybe you have your PPP money, and you know that you got to have them up and running by the end of June, 
then um, you don't have to put all 10 names in. You can do six now, and then as you hire the other ones, uh, add them in. But but keep in mind that one one work day to be able to get the, the exam or the information, the course. This class is one of the most important things that I think that we've ever done. And we've done a lot of stuff. I mean, Janice and I have been in the industry for over 20 years. Liz, you've been in, in the industry for, for, for over 20 years. And we've all worked really hard to make this a better industry to be in as business owners, as well as for the benefit of the hardworking people who go out there and clean homes every day. And it starts with professionalism. It starts with this information. And it's a journey. This in and of itself doesn't create everything that, that we want to happen. But this is the foundation. If we can start getting cleaning professionals to see their job as a profession and investing in the knowledge that it takes, not only the knowledge, but the, motiva the, the, the motivation, the desire to, to grow and to learn, um, they're going to create opportunities for themselves. They're going to create opportunities for our businesses. They're going to be uh, earning the trust and 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 and, and recognition that that they really deserve. Because I mean, the amount of responsibility that we truly have, especially in today's world with COVID nineteen out there, this is important. This is really important stuff. And. You can't go wrong by making this investment in the people that are out there cleaning homes every day. And two more things that you know we don't hit on very often, but they're 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 I, I, I don't know to my mind they are hugely impactful. First, if your people take training like this, they will be more engaged. You will keep your employees longer. So if one of the things that you're trying to do is to create a retention program, training like this needs to be at the foundation of that training program. I mean, of that retention program. Training is one of the strongest retention tools that you have. And it's highly underutilized. People think they need to feed people breakfast, buy them gifts, et cetera, et cetera. A good training program trumps all of those things in a really huge way. That's one thing. The second thing is you're going to have more money. So when your company is seen as the professional company, you can charge more money. So you know how you hear people saying all the time, I can't charge more. People in my area won't pay more. Guess who they pay more to? Mm -hmm. The professional companies the companies that they see as the most professional companies. They will pay more money, but they have to see you in a different light. Everybody wants a good job. Everybody wants an awesome job. This is part of making every cleaning professional's job awesome. It's not the full, it doesn't in and of itself completely satisfy that requirement, but you, you will not have an awesome job as a cleaning professional unless you understand the why behind what you're doing and have an internal appreciation for the responsibility and the trust you have and what you need to know and what you need to do to live up to that that trust and responsibility this program addresses that yep so i know we've been talking about this for a long time obviously we all feel really passionate about this training uh, I don't think that you're going to find a better training program. Ernie, great point, Liz, because the myth is that if you train them, they will leave, which begs the question, what happens if you don't train and they stay? Yeah, I love that, Ernie. That's like one of my very, very favorites. Good good stuff right there. Um, I, I forgot what I was going to say again. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> We're... Uh... We're against the, the hour here. You think, uh, just real quick, again, moderncleaning.com. Click on the button on the right here. It will take you to the program. And for most of you, if not all of you, I mean, if you, you own a business, you got multiple people, click here on the right. 
We talked about the uh, the discount code. You don't need the discount code code if you're buying in bulk. That's already figured in again. So I'll just show you if I go here and plug in. I'll plug in fifty one just to, to to make the math easy. And ninety nine dollars a pop times fifty one. That's like five thousand, right? But you can't really it, see that, Tom. You can't. No, it's okay. much tiny. No. Okay. <laughs> You're buying 51 at the standard rate, you know, that's over five grand, but it's 50% off because of the volume discount and another 50% off of that. So in essence, you're getting 50 for like $1,200 and change. I don't know, like $24 and, and some odd cents. So this is about as uh, good a deal that you're ever going to get. And I'm not saying buy 50 if you're not going to be able to use them in 90 days, but um, yeah. You know, yeah, buy, don't do that. Buy what you think you're going to need, and 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 now's the time to do it. And the other, like I said, the class number one rolls out Wednesday noon Eastern. The other classes are going to be rolling out over the next several weeks throughout the month of May. But so, you have to buy before Wednesday, you guys. Tuesday. So I don't want to be in this situation again that we were in last time. We gave everybody a week. You guys, it's free. It's free. It's free, right? And then we're like, okay, tomorrow it's not. We're going to charge for it. And people were like, oh, but I didn't get it for free. Mm -hmm. I know. I warned you. So we've been telling you for a week now. It's 50% off. You're not going to find a better deal ever. <laughs> so get it today or tomorrow. So that you aren't 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 beating yourself up over this later. Uh, Crystal, you guys have truly revolutionized the cleaning industry. So proud to have spent time learning with you guys. Even though I'm not in the business any longer, I still utilize everything I've learned when cleaning my own home and helping friends and family. Knowledge is power. Awesome. That's great to hear, Crystal. <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. You know who Crystal is? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Show Crystal a picture. Is one of our models in our Where'd I go? You just had her up. No, nope. hey, Crystal. Hi, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one standing. Well, we've got several pictures like that. We put the smiling pictures in. There's another one where she and the other lady's name is Holda have this kind of serious look on their face. And Janice didn't say it quite this way, but it's like they look like that they're going to clean the heck out of your house. <laughs> I bet we can figure out which part she said different. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Good to see you, Crystal. Your your help was was all, a lot of this wouldn't happen if it wasn't for your help. Thank you for joining us. Um, are we good? We're good. Okay, guys. We are. We are. Everybody, keep up with your money. So, oh, that was the last thing I wanted to say. I'm glad I remembered it. Um, if you guys have either idle money or PPP money, don't waste it. Your PPP money should be being spent on some seriously good training. This is something that you can do with your people. Get, sit them down and get them trained. That's one thing. If you have idle money, buy the training. This is a place that you want to invest in your company. So my business coach today said something to me that I thought was awesome. What did he say? How did he say it? You can either, um, everything that you purchase is either a cost or an investment. Y'all, what's this? This is an investment. It's not a cost. So I love that. I love my business coach. In, in he also says about. this all the time. He also says, don't take shortcuts, take smart cuts. Yeah. Which I love too. And if you do the training, so, you're going to have to be paying your people to do the training so you can pay them to do the training out of the PPP funds. I mean, that's even more reason that, that now is the time. Yeah. Do it Not now. To the fact that the marketplace, your customers and your prospective customers are going to be placing more value on having cleaning professionals who actually understand the science of cleaning, what hygienic cleaning is. I mean, there's so many reasons why why now's the time to do this. So, and you'll never be saying again. You'll never be one of those companies that's like, but the trunk slammers in my area. You won't care. You won't notice them. I, 
I, I don't even know who trunk slammers are in my area. They're, they're not a concern. Do you guys think about trunk slammers in Charleston? No. It's our issue with Long Fall. We allow that to happen. This is how we make that a non issue. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an issue at all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we have been um, on this for like almost an hour. Sorry, guys. This didn't mean to turn into a pitch fest, but everybody's been asking us what's going to be in the program. So we wanted to give a really good outline to show you guys this is really highest quality stuff you're going to find. And I know that Tom and Janice have a tendency to speak very highbrow. They're both very professional people. <laughs> but the program is, you guys are, you guys are like kind of scary sometimes. But the program is designed by them, but it's also with a voice to your cleaning professionals. So it is, um, um, it, it is easy to understand. It's not full of scary stuff. Like, like Janice said, she doesn't want to scare you in that section. It's not scary. Your people won't feel intimidated or like it's too much for them. I don't. I feel good about it. You know me. I can handle a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good. Uh, you're welcome, Ursula. And I, again, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about your cousin. But I'm so glad to see you on, on this on this um, webinar today. Or I guess not a webinar, Facebook Live. So tomorrow, oh. 5 o'clock Eastern, same time, same channel. Same back time, same back channel. Tomorrow, I'm going to share with you guys. <laughs> Same bat time. Tomorrow I'm going to share with you guys what I'm doing to spend my PPP money, how I'm doing that. So if you want to see what I'm doing in Olympia. And we'll, uh, we'll dig up the idle rules and share them as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Thanks a bunch. Much appreciated. See uh, thanks so much, Janice. Thanks so much for coming on here today, Janice. Thanks, Thank son. Bye-bye. <laughs>